Mikey T here at the sports book. Tuesday, April 16th. Following up on our picks for later on in this evening in the NBA playoffs. I wanted to just I wanted to explain or convey or per persuade, convince, tell, brag on someone, on everyone, on why they would call Mike Sportsbook. Because I give you the latest up-to-date predictions, and I give you winners, and I tell you how it is. I don't candy coat anything, and I don't even ask you for money. You ain't paying me. I'm just giving you my expertise, my education, my my statistics, my studying habits, and stuff like that. I've been gambling for 40 years. I've been winning for 40 years, and, and I've been losing for 40 years. It, it goes both in hand in hand. It's just, uh, it, how's been my money management? How is going to be your money management? What do you do when you win? What do you do with your money when you win? Do you go out and buy stuff? Or do you put it back into your business? And expand your business? Is this just for recreation? Is this an addiction that you've used in, in a negative sense and it's ruined your life? Have you used it in a positive sense where you're moving forward and expanding your business? Expanding your 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 sights? You gotta study the material. There's two sides to it. It's either the front side or the back side and then you gotta just go for it winners never quit and quitters never win uh, <laughs> nothing lasts forever like I said earlier if an undefeated team they're undefeated and they're going to play a winless team team's number one against the undefeated team I'm taking the the winless team it seems like what I've found in sports baseball basketball football hockey boxing golf tennis is as athletes approach the professional level they're hungry they're hungry. They try harder. They just, it seems like they're better. And then when they get paid and the money comes into it and whatever the contract is, multi-year, year-to-year, option year, all that stuff, it seems like their performance goes down because I think they lose that drive. They lose that hungriness. Once they get to the, once you climb the mountain and you're at the top, very few athletes very few athletes I'm calling true champions when they climb that mountain and then they go down the mountain and then they climb it again and they go down and they climb it again and they go down and they climb it again and they go down and they climb it again the John Woodens of UCLA basketball the LA Lakers and Magic Johnson the Boston Celtics of Larry Bird the Detroit Pistons Isaiah and Joe Dumars the New York Knicks the Philadelphia Eagles, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the New York Rangers, the New York Islanders, the Montreal Canadiens, the Dallas Cowboys, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the New England Patriots, Michael Phelps, all these athletes, <laughs> they get to the top of the mountain, the success and everything, it just seems like where do you go from here? Where do you go from there? And that's my point. And now Michigan is leading the, the country in the United States of online gaming and online gambling and sports betting and all this stuff with DraftKings and FanDuel, MGM, Greek Town, Firekeepers, Turtle Creek. Michigan's leading the country in that in that in that industry. If you have an electrical problem, you call an electrician. 
If you have a plumbing problem, you call a plumber. If your car's giving you problems, <clears throat> you call a mechanic. If you're going to have a big catering event, you have some chefs. You want professionally shit done. So when you're doing your recreation and you're you're betting these games and you're betting the boxing and the UFC and the all the sports and the golf and you're making those bets, there's two types of those gamblers out there. The recreational people that don't really care. They just do it because they want to win or they can win or to get along or to blend in with the keeping up with the Joneses. And then there's the people that do it for a living are more serious when they make their bet they go they go to the tv and they watch it they watch the game or they watch their bet or you know what i mean it ain't like they just bet it and then oh they'll just check their ticket or they'll just check the news next week and see if their game won no the serious better the serious gambler they'll call mike at mike's sports book they'll go to the casino they'll make the bets <clears throat> they won't care. It ain't like they're betting their bill money. They'll go to the casino and have a nice night out on the town. That's their entertainment. But yet they're a serious gambler, and, and they gamble, and they bet. They have to have a maintain your little gambling bankroll. That's not your car payment, not your house payment. You have your own little gambling bankroll. If you want to go to the movies, that don't come out of the gambling bankroll. You go to the movies with your other money. The gambling bankroll is set aside from everything. You don't have to play every day, every day, every day, every game. I challenge anybody that's watching this right now, make a bet on a game and forget about it and don't worry about it until next week. Give yourself one week. Make a bet on Monday and then take your mind off of it and don't worry about that bet until next Monday and, and uh, check the results. Let me tell you how that. Let me let me know how that works for you guys. So, so when they call Mike Sportsbook, I give them, I give them all scenarios. I'm not trying to yank their chain and get you guys to pay me money. Now, what if I'm wrong? How does that go? It's an insult to my intelligence. Hey, but I'm saying when I get on a lucky streak, and that streak goes take care of old Mikey T at the sports book I start putting coin in your pocket fucking tip me off and no different than a waiter or a waitress I know what I'm talking about I win these games I handicap the horses I've been all over the country gambling betting I've talked to a lot of different bettors a lot of different gamblers and now the legalized sports betting Come on, man. Some of these prop bets are sucker bets. Because my brother's cousin talked to Joe, and Joe's not even going to try tonight. Oh, how about that? He was out in the yard gardening, and he cut his foot on the rototiller, and he didn't tell no one in the clubhouse because he didn't want to be put on the IR. So he's just limping around, gapping around. He's not even going to go 100% tonight. <laughs> Why would I want to bet any props on him? Why would I even want to bet his team? The other guy fucking uh, smashed his finger. And he's not holding the bat right. So what the fuck? That's my fucking hitter. I'm not betting that team, that prop. How do you know? You better do your education. You better do your studying and know your material and know who's trying. Who's going to be playing? You think you're going to make all these prop bets on some players, and then they don't even—they got a sore throat, and he—he he had to go for 25 points tonight, 11 rebounds, and 10 assists, and oh, he had a fever when he woke up this morning. You weren't up his ass, so he didn't tell you. And then he goes to the game, and he don't even really want to play, and he takes his own self out of the game at the end of the third quarter. <laughs> you know, I guess to each his own. You tread water. Uh, tread water lightly, Bucko. That's what they say. Or that one movie, Cocktail, with Tom Cruise, Coughlin's Law. Yeah, Mikey T's sports book. Rule number one, maintain your bankroll. Number two, you need to study your material and know, know what day it is. And number three, you don't change your mind when you get your plays. You don't get influenced by nobody. You don't you don't uh, let any outside distractions come in. You stay focused. You need to have an ink pen and a little paper and pen at all times, keeping down your bets. <clears throat> Sometimes head your bet. 
sometimes if if I can bet one way one way and go with the other way with partially one way and get it with something else down the road, that's how I do it. I'll do an explanation like that. I like betting games singular, but if we want to stick together and get a parlay going like I've shown you that I've hit a three-teamer and a five-teamer, we'll go the one team on top, we'll go two choices for my second leg, and then we'll single that third leg. It's like picking a pick three in the horse racing. I want a three-team parlay. I'll take the Dodgers with the Cubs and the Reds, and then I'll take the Dodgers with the Cubs and the Brewers if, if those teams were all playing, you know, in the game. So that, or if I do a five teamer, you know, boom, boom, boom. Dodgers, Yankees, Cubs, Brewers, Phillies, and then on another one I do Dodgers, Yankees, Cubs, Brewers. White Sox, or you know what, I'd have to write it on paper. I will write it on paper again and again and again until you guys start succeeding and following what the hell I'm laying down. I ain't wasting my breath out here in the sunshine for anything. This is Michael T. from the sports book, and you guys have a nice day, and I'll be back in touch. And go Pelicans, go, go Warriors, go Yankees, go Michael T. at the sports book. Michigan's premier sports betting hotline with tips, analysis, and predictions. We cover the UFC cage fights. As again, I don't rub it in no one's face, but Max Holloway, baby, I love you. And I was all over you two weeks as soon as they as soon as they said the matchup, Max Holloway against Justin Gagey. I was all over you, Max. I've been following you since you. I've been following you for a long time. Anyways, that was a winner there. But yeah, UFC. Baseball, football, basketball, hockey, tennis, golf, Olympics, even foreign ping pong in the Euro- European countries. Michael T. will be there round the clock, 24 hours, tips, analysis, and predictions right out of Michigan, Eastern time. You guys enjoy the day, and I'll be with you in a short Mike Sportsbook, always with you.